very important occasion in the lives of two of God's workers. It seems appropriate that in speaking to them and to you, I should use words from an older minister to a young one. From 2 Timothy chapter 4. Words we generally hear at ordination time. There the Apostle Paul said, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. I say it's appropriate now, especially now, that we remind our brethren of this charge. Preach the word. At a time when confusion is coming in, preach the word. At a time when men are humanizing God and deifying men, preach the word. This epistle, the last which Paul wrote before his martyrdom, is invested with a peculiar interest in that it contains the last will and testament of a dying man. His dying counsels, his last will and testament to Timothy, and to oncoming Timothy's until the very end of time as the torch of truth is passed on from generation to generation. Now Paul understands this is his last epistle. How then does he write? And when you think about it, that's an intriguing and exciting question. For Paul had endured so much. Because he preached the word. And now as he is about to die, is he weary? Will he modify any of his doctrinal positions? If so, there is time to do this before this letter is published. Will Paul say, if I had my life to live over, I would take it a little easy? I would be a little softer in my pronouncements, a little less dogmatic. How does Paul speak in his dying hour? Well, I've just read it to you. He said to the young preacher, preach the word. And this was like a military charge. Stick to the message. Cling to the old, old story. Timothy might have said before, men will not endure sound doctrine. Men will despise and reject any message or any messenger which cuts across their grain, the grain of their unbridled passions and inordinate desires. Paul, they will not listen anymore. So be it. Preach the word. But Paul, listen, even in the church, we've come to the time when church members won't abide it anymore. I understand that, but preach the word. Do not become intimidated by weak need believers. Believers in what? Ye shifty speculators. You stealers of prophetic mantles. You are not really the church of Christ. You who reshuffle your theological cards and rearrange your credenda and modify and dilute the doctrinal positions of the church. Don't you let folk like that bother you. Preach the word. But St. Paul, what is it all about? Why preach the word in the face of all this rejection? I'll tell you 
Why? Because God's word will not return unto him void. Don't you develop a complex, my brethren. Don't you let these people bother you. Somebody, somewhere, is hungering and thirsting for the truth. If there's only one person in all your congregation, then set the table for that one person and preach the word. That's the way Jesus did it. And as surely as you give the trumpet a certain sound, somebody is going to respond. Somebody is going to believe. Somebody is going to turn around. And after you have rebuked and after you have reproved, then exhort the people. And let them know there's somebody who's made a way. Tell them that the standard is high. You will not drag the standard down to make them comfortable with it. But there is somebody who can lift them up to the standard. No matter how weak they are, there is a bomb in Gilead and there is a physician there. Preach the word. Somebody wants the word. I was preaching out in Los Angeles recently. And there was one of our sisters... She decided to call up another Adventist lady so they could come to the meetings together. Her name was Sister Ivy Henry in Los Angeles. Some of you might know her. She got on the phone trying to call Sister Withers. And she dialed what she thought was the number and someone said, hello. And Sister Henry said, Sister Withers. And the other voice said, who? She said, I'm trying to reach Sister Withers. The lady said, well, you have a wrong number. There's nobody here by that name. Sister Henry said, well, wait a minute. Don't hang up. Have you been out to the meeting? The lady said, what meeting? She said, there's a man here and he's preaching the truth. And, and she talked about it a little while. And the lady said, that sounds good. Sister Henry said, you want me to come by and get you? She said, yes. Sister Owens was picked up by Sister Henry. She came every night and took her stand when the appeal was made. Preach the word. God's got some folk out there who want to hear the word. Now, my brethren, preach it with beneficence. And preach it with humility. Somebody will listen. Remember, God loves the people. Preach it experientially. Did you hear that? Preach it experientially. Human nature doesn't want to hear it in the first place. They are certainly not going to take it from a fake or a hypocrite. So if you're going to preach the word, leave it. That word hypocrite comes from a word which means actor. Folk are tired of actors and shams and fakes and facades. And all of those who are acting had better get their act together. It's time to preach the word. And let the word do its work. When you walk into your pulpit, your face ought to be shining. Because before coming to the pulpit, you went first to Mount Horeb to meet with the Lord. And when your face is aflame, somebody will listen and take note that you have been with Jesus. Preach the word. Preach it with clean hands. Preach it as one having a good report. Preach it until you provoke people. I'd rather some be mad than to be neutral and apathetic. Preach the word until you disturb somebody. And every time you preach the word, like an exorcist, hold up the crucifixion, hold up the cross of Christ, and men will bow before the Lord of heaven and earth. I know it's a time of hostility against the truth. I know that men will not endure sound doctrine. I want you to notice the Bible doesn't say they can't endure it says they will not endure. Soon these who will not endure will be condemned, not because of ignorance, but because of unbelief. And unbelief is the most serious and contemptible evil that one can have in the face of Almighty God. If a soul wills to turn from God, if a soul doesn't like your sermon, 
If somebody is tired of hearing the truth and they get up and walk out of your church, better for them to make that decision than to do it because they came to your church and got nothing there. Preach the word. Preach it whether they like it or not. For thou art unto them an indispensable man. Did you catch that word? We had one of the most severe winters in the history of Washington, D.C. The cold set records down there. One night on television, they showed one of the bands going around the city visiting the street people. Now, in case you don't know who they are, these are men and women without homes. They sleep on the streets in cardboard boxes next to bonfires and they were up there on the coldest night in the history of record keeping in the nation's capital and now they let us watch the interviews here were men who had a warm place for whosoever will here were men who had hot and nourishing food for anyone who would take it and almost in every experience, they met with rejection. I remember them approaching a woman who was sleeping over a grate where some heat escaped from a building and came up through the sidewalk. She was an old woman. From the looks of her, she might have been infirmed. When the man told her, we have a bed for you in a warm place, we have food for you, it's all free of charge, We've got salvation for you. That woman said, I've been sleeping on this grill for four years. I'm afraid if I get up now, somebody will take my place. The next day, those same men made the rounds to pick up the frozen corpses. For men and women had frozen to death that night. Preach the word. Preach it anyhow. Preach it against appearances. Appearances will go against you sometime. When Paul made this statement to Timothy, he was in jail. Nero was on the throne. Rome was full of immorality and madness. You wondered how they could get any worse. Paul said, don't be discouraged, preacher. Now is the time of our times to preach the word. Don't be ashamed to preach the word. I am in bonds, but the word of God is not bound. When you preach it, make sure you believe it, because if you don't believe it, people will know. Paul said, therefore, hold fast. I looked that term up. It means, do not take it in a casual way, but grip it with every finger. The time has come for us to know what we believe. Would you say amen out there? If you are preaching and you don't believe it, you are transmitting your doubt and uncertainty. But when you know what you believe and preach what you believe, it comes across with authority. Had the privilege of preaching in Egypt. Couldn't speak a word of Arabic. Every night, standing up there preaching, and through the foolishness of preaching, men and women came to the cross. But I had an interpreter who was really good. One night I got a letter written in Arabic. Had to get someone to interpret my letter. The letter said, Pastor, we listen to your interpreter, but we look at you. And we can tell by your eyes. We can tell by your eyes that you believe everything you say and there is a power in your ministry. I've collected some information on the eyes. One writer said every time a man tells a lie, his eyes flash it. And if you knew how to look for the signal, you could always tell when somebody's right. That's when the liar usually drops his head. Doesn't want to look you in the eye. 
Now the problem is most black folk got dark eyes and you can't always catch the signal. But it's there. When you know what you believe, when you believe in God, when you're preaching out of the depths of your heart and experience, people in your audience catch it. And they are thus moved by the power of the Word of God. Preach the Word. Shun profane and faint and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. All of a sudden we've reached an age of intellectualism and theology in the church. Read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation. You will not find one place where theology is according the status of being a gift of the Spirit. God made evangelists and God made prophets and God made apostles. Men made theologians. And all of a sudden we've got men who've become so smart, they're smarter than God and the Word and the Spirit of Prophecy. Creating problems in Zion for some. I don't let them bother me too much because I expect them. And when I see them emerging, I say, glory to God, there's another sign. There's another proof. <laughs> Last week I preached another kind of sermon, and I told the people to hold on. Don't be bothered by those hiding behind scholarship who would throw away disciples after themselves, who were denouncing the spirit of prophecy. Who declare that there's no sanctuary in heaven? Don't you let them bother you. Ellen White says in 1844, Jesus left the holy place, went into the most holy place. As I said to the youth this morning, don't ask me to explain it. God didn't tell me to explain it. He told me to believe it. And you know what? I believe it. And if I'm going to risk my soul on the Lord's servant or a theologian, you better bet your bottom dollar I'm going with the servant of the Lord. Preach the word. Some of my brethren were sensitive about what I said last week. They said, Pastor Brooks, sounds like you are against education. I said, man, I'm educated. My wife is so close to her doctorate, she can have it at will. My daughter has a master's degree that I paid for. My son says he wants to go to grad school, told him I'd pay for that. What kind of fool would I be to do that? And I'm against education. But on the other hand, said I, if you are denouncing the spirit of prophecy, I was talking about you. If you are going around telling people that uh, there is no sanctuary in heaven, I was talking about you. <laughs> now, now, my brethren, don't get into that. Preach the word. Don't get into word splitting. Stick with the great principles. That's all you need to be a mighty preacher for God. If you threw away every book in your library except the Bible, Desire of Ages, and Great Controversy, you could preach till Jesus comes. Yeah. Preach the Word! You don't have to worry about the Word becoming shaky. Every generation or so, the Bible says, the foundation of God standing sure. Those who've heard me preach know that I like to look into the etymological meaning of words. I looked up the word sure, and it comes from the same root as the word rock. The word of God is like a rock. When you preach the word, you're standing on the rock. And if you venture out into the deep, always have a rock to come back to. The rock doesn't tremble because you tremble. The rock doesn't shake because the wind blows. The rock doesn't change because the climate changes. Never mind that men would reject you. 
you are yet indispensable to them and to holy order if and so long as your mouth is filled with the truth. The problem is in Zion today, men and women have been confectioned and pampered and they do not write a straight testimony. They condemn the spirit of prophecy because it condemns them. Volume 5, page 670. The Lord's servant gives five steps in leaving the truth and going to hell. And the first step is to lose confidence in those at the head of the work. Now, I'm not going to accuse anybody. I just want you to think. I don't care if it's a preacher or a layman or scholar or whatever. If your great burden is to condemn the leadership of the church, you are already suspect. You got a problem. The second step is to lose your faith in the testimony. All I ask you to do is think, and these are listed in this order, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. The third step is to lose confidence in the doctrines and pillars of our faith. Not only the sanctuary, but these same folk are now saying Sabbath keeping is optional. And over in Australia, they are saying we don't eat pork, but if you want to, don't worry about the old dispensation with its councils in Leviticus and Deuteronomy. The fourth step is to lose their faith in the plain teachings of the Word of God. And the last step is the downward path to perdition. In the midst of all this, God needs a voice crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. God needs a Jeremiah in the church and an Ezekiel out in the wilderness. Would you say amen out there? God is calling upon you to be those men. I think of Jeremiah. When I think of Ezekiel, I know that these men walk through the chambers of dark dispensations. They had such pressure brought to bear, they hated the days they were born, and they said so. Jeremiah was a man of tears, notorious for his crying. By the way, your soul can't always flourish in laughter. There got to be some weeping between the porch and the altar. If you've never been tempted to discouragement, and I want to talk directly to these two young men here. If you've never been tempted to discouragement in the ministry, it's because the devil doesn't consider you a worthy opponent. When you start knocking him around, he's going to knock you around. Jeremiah and Ezekiel went through this. One of them cried out, I am the man that have seen affliction. Now, I call this point and counterpoint. I want you to listen now. You see, when Jeremiah makes a statement, don't you rush to put a period behind it. You just stick in a semicolon because he's got something else to say. In one breath, Jeremiah said, I am a man that has seen affliction. In another place he said, It is by his mercies that we are not consumed. Would you say amen? One place Jeremiah says, He turneth his hand against me all day. But in another place he said, His compassions are new every morning. In one place he said, when I cry and shout, he shutteth out my prayer. In another place he said, the Lord is good unto the soul that seeketh him. 
In one place, Jeremiah says, The Lord hath pulled me to pieces. He hath made me desolate. But in another place, he said of that same God, He doth not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. So don't you read one line and get discouraged. You go on to see the whole testimony. These contradictory experiences were in the same man. Jeremiah. Let Jeremiah say all he has to say before you come to a conclusion. I've had the privilege of taking part in many ordination services. And always there is somebody to welcome the new brethren into the battle-scarred ranks of the ministry. I heard that so many times, and I heard it for so long, that one day I got up behind it and I said, Brethren, there are some battles, and there are some scars, but the Lord knows how to put some sweet meats on the table too. It's not all battles and scars. There comes a time for dessert and joy and ecstasy and victory in the ministry. Went into this thing 31 years ago. Surely the Lord has been good to me. I can stand here today and tell you it has been the greatest experience a soul can have and the highest privilege in the nicest work. Preach the word. This act of preaching is indispensable. Many sing hymns. Many pray prayers while rolling sweet iniquities under their tongues. But you preach the word. You thus become the spark and the tender for setting a congregation on fire. If not in this service, then do it on the sidewalk. Do it in the homes of the people. Visit the people. Be instant, in season, out of season, wherever you are. Preach the word. Let there be depression in the church. But thank God today, that depression can become redemptive. It's a dangerous thing to be wrong and happy. When you preach the word, the discouragement will dissipate like dew before the morning sun. The church will experience revival. Preach the word. Preach the word. You will discover it's the best way to get rid of religious depression. Church needs the word. There was a man who had a very valuable horse. He called up the veterinarian. Told him the horse is sick. He came over and he gave that horse shots. He gave that horse potions. He gave that horse poultices to wear. He rubbed him down two or three times a day. When he had done so, he charged him $175, and the horse was still sick. So the man went next door to old Farmer Brown, who had some good, healthy horses. He said, I wonder, Farmer Brown, you without your degree in veterinary medicine, I wonder, old oh, Farmer Brown, you without a background in science and biology, I wonder if you would come over and look at my horse. Farmer Brown came over and studied the horse for a moment. Then he said, John, all this horse needs is some plain, good old food. Feed him. Preach the word. Elder Charles Bradford said, well-fed sheep don't stray. Good Baptist friend out in Cleveland, Ohio said to me, Brooks, the 
trouble with you is you steal my sheep. I said, Redden, steal some of mine. Not only is it true that well-fed sheep don't stray, but you can shear them too. When you preach the word, they'll build your church and raise your in gathering. How do I know? Experience. Preach the word. Takes care of everything. David said, Power belongeth unto God, unto thee also, Lord, belongeth mercy. So when you preach the word, present a loving God. A God without love is a monster. That's the God of the heathen. When you preach the word, show God stooping with motherly grace. Power, all power, is in the hands of mercy. All power is in nail scarred hands. Omnipotence is impregnated with tender pity. The divine nature includes not only the strength of the father, but the tenderness of the mother. Gender is too restricted to describe God. God says, as a mother comforted her children, I'm like a mother. Can a mother forget her suckling child? Yea, she may forget. Yet will I not forget thee. Ladies and gentlemen, preach the message straight, but preach grace. Preach his righteousness. Tell folk they don't have to struggle to get out. He will extricate them. He will pull them out. When he pulls you out, he transforms your life so that a drunkard goes home and puts food on the table. A man enslaved with habits is set free. You can get the monkey off your back. Tell the people he can clean up your mind through the word. And as this debate intensifies, stick to the word. Don't get all excited. Don't be going off chasing the devil's rabbits. Other denominations admit that they are adrift in uncertain seas. They say at their conventions, we are trying to find ourselves. Now this is a fact. My brother-in-law, who is a minister in the Methodist Church, was returning from their general conference convention when I was there just three weeks ago. I said to him, what were the issues? What did you talk about? He said they spent most of their time trying to get a resolution on the Middle East, whether to condemn Israel or support Israel. I thought to myself, thank God, when we go to general conference, we got weightier matters than that. Would you say amen out there? We have to do with heavenly kingdom, New Jerusalem. So as you see all this happening, don't let others, others become your example who confess that they are adrift. And that they're doing everything they can do to put members back in their churches. The moral majority is depending on politics. But I tell you tonight, today, Sabbath, sweetened it with the Holy Ghost, lightened it with Jesus, who is our righteousness. That is your message, and you can preach till the day you die. Preaching that message. Preach the word. You have been listening to another special American Set Ministries presentation. This recording has been digitally reprocessed from the original audio cassette in order to make this CD available. The audio quality was improved as much as possible. 
International Copyright American Cassette Ministries, all rights reserved. To order CDs or audio cassettes of this or other presentations, or for a free catalog, please call toll-free 1-800-233-4450. International calls, please dial 717-652-7000. You may also order from our secure website at www.americancassette.org. There you will discover the largest selection of genuine Adventist preaching available. American Cassette Ministries is not a one-man band. It's an orchestra of outstanding speakers who are all on the same theological page. You can trust ACM. There's no compromise here. If American Cassette Ministries has been a blessing to you, why not take a moment just now and send us a note or an email with your testimony. Our email address is info at americancassette.org. We'll share it with the speakers and volunteer workers to encourage them. Your prayers and financial support are important to ensure the continuation of this ministry as we help prepare America and the world to meet Jesus Christ. Peace coming soon.